Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you all are doing great. Today we are going to discuss philosophy and education. What is the difference between philosophy and education and what is the importance of philosophy in education. So basically we are talking about education not philosophy. Okay. So we will be discussing the definition of philosophy as well as the <coughs> definition of uh, education and then the scope of philosophy in education and the need of philosophy in education when it comes to philosophy remember one thing this is a greek word and it comes from philo philo means love or friendship simply means it is related to a deep you know connection or a strong you can say liking for something and the second word is sophia sophia means wisdom it refers to the knowledge inside our deep understanding means sophia is related to deep understanding of things that is particularly related to the basic truths whether it is regarding you know life or it is existence of life and the universe so philo means the uh, love and friendship or love or friendship and when it comes to sophia it is a deep understanding of universe or human life or the truth of human beings so philosophy literally means the love of wisdom it reflects a desire to seek knowledge truth and understanding of the deeper principles of life and the world around us so when it comes to the root which i have to already uh, told you it uh, it has greek roots so the word comes from ancient greek where philosophia was used to describe intellectual inquiry and the pursuit of knowledge so now what is the definition of philosophy when it comes to the definition of it so philosophy is the study of fundamental nature of reality that what is reality the existence existence of natural things or the existence of human life you can say the knowledge the values reasons mind and language and there are many more in it it seeks to understand the deeper principles that govern the world and our place in it that what is the importance of human in the universe and how the universe was made there are logical or you can say the deep connection with the nature philosophy involves critical thinking critical thinking means you are deeply connected to the thing you are questioning that thing. you are reasoning about it you are in debate so you are talking about the truth that what is truth what is morality what is justice what is beauty and what is the purpose of life so critical thinking and questioning reasoning all these things in education they are related to philosophy or they are philosophical terms now when it comes to the definition of education now see mostly um, uh, the you can say the universal definition is that ki education is the positive change or change in human behavior is education so when we talk about change in human behavior so we do have you know we have both positive and negative uh, you can say uh, changes in human behavior so what is education then it means that ki education is the positive change in human behavior so education brings positive change in your life so now let's see what is there in the slide education is the process of facilitating learning acquiring knowledge skills values beliefs and habits so habits are positive habits beliefs are th those beliefs which are related you know there is a moral collection with it we cannot say that okay, my beliefs are right and you are is wrong we are deeply studying it okay, if this belief is wrong for me then why it is uh, you know right for you it involves the development of critical thinking and understanding through various methods like teaching training discussion and research education aims to shape individuals into well-rounded knowledgeable and responsible members of society so overall if we talk about the definition of education it brings a positive change it gives us positive knowledge positive skills positive values beliefs and the ha habits right 
so now what is the relationship between philosophy and education what is the connection between philosophy and education first if we study philosophy is a foundation of education see it provides the guiding principles for educational system if you are running an education system and you need guidance so philosophy is there to help you how this helps so we will study that further uh, further now see educational goals for example <laughs> you are setting your objectives the curriculum development teaching methods and even the teacher student relationship uh, are influenced by different philosophical ideas if you see for example the idealist philosophy may focus on the development of the mind and intellect while the pragmatism might emphasize practical skills and experimental learning so in in everything when you are doing in education particularly in teaching so you take help from education uh, sorry uh, from philosophy <clears throat> so now if we talk about philosophy you know ki how philosophy defines educational goal see if we look at the different philosophical outlooks they have different aims of education for example if we study the humanist philosophy of education that focuses on you know fostering individual potential and personal growth the humanist philosophy of education focuses on fostering individual and you know potential and personal growth then when we talk about the utilitarian philosophy of education they are utilitarian philosophy so that prioritize education that you know leads to economic productivity and social utility so every educational per, uh, philosophical you know perspective in education that gives different form to education that gives different ways of learning in education if we study philosophy is a guide uh, you know for curriculum development so when you are making the content or the structure of any subject so that what uh, is taught in school are influenced by philosophical beliefs how these are influenced by philosophical beliefs for example if you uh, you know study progressive philosophy that promote flexibility in education for example this progressive philosophy supports student center curriculum and you know that encourages exploration and creativity while traditional philosophy might support structured structured curriculum focusing on class subjects like literature mathematics and history now see if we uh, in comparatively if we study both this you know progressive philosophy and traditional philosophy if we talk about progressive philosophy there is a change that progressive philosophy more than you know what is written in the book it promotes um, you know the co curricular activity or learning through activity and when it comes to traditional it gives more focus on root memorization and you know the structured form of curriculum so philosophy plays a vital role when you are making or setting a curriculum then when it comes to scope of philosophy in education now see whenever educational objectives are aims are uh, aims to be defined then for example philosophy defines the purpose of education okay, why you are you know teaching these particular subject to students so you have to answer that why and when you are st- uh, answering that why it means that is philosophy behind that education right so when it comes to idealism in philosophy so idealism in education is a philosophy it emphasizes the development of the mind and moral character so in educational institutes idealism it focuses on the growth of the students mind and they are you know developing their moral characters when we talk about realism it focuses on imparting factual knowledge and understanding of the natural world the connection and the see the connection between what is re, uh, or written in the book and what is the you know practical aspect of that very theory which is written in the book so realism as a philosophy it focuses on the imparting of factual knowledge and understanding of that very natural world when we talk about pragmatism it promotes you know practical skills and problem solving abilities so we have discussed that ki philosophy means critical thinking so pragmatism what 
uh, it does it promotes practical skills and problem solving abilities when we talk about existentialism so it encourages personal choices self expression and individual growth see remember when you are teaching in the class there are students who are very different for example if you have 20 students in the class so you have 20 minds in the class 20 minds means 20 different personalities so exist uh, existentialism you know that supports and that encourages personal choices that encourages self expression that encourages individual growth so the importance of individuality also comes from philosophy into education so these uh, philosophical methods are you could say they suggest you know that the different and for education whether it is to create thinkers skilled workers responsible citizens are fulfilled individuals so whenever you are working on a student to you know uh, to make that very student a creative or a uh, logical thinker or a skilled man or a skilled worker or a responsible citizen then you have to stay uh, there must be connection between education and philosophy second uh, when it comes to the scope of philosophy it helps in curriculum design whenever the uh, curriculum is being designed for an educational institute so uh, here the philosophy plays a vital role how when it comes to the idealists so they stress the teaching of literature philosophy and the arts is these disciplines cultivate the mind and character when it comes to realist so what they do they emphasize the sciences mathematics and imperial subjects to understand reality so both idealists and realists they work together to make a, you can say a good or a you know progressive nation when it comes to progressive education based on pragmatist uh, philosophy would focus on interdisciplinary learning hands on activities and real world ap application so see this progressive that more focuses on co-curricular activities idealist they more you know they focus on uh, your personal growth and your more developing your moral character in your mindset and when it comes to realist they are preparing you for the reality of the work for your workplace uh, for your jobs right so philosophy equally uh, you know uh, uh, when you are designing curriculum so you have to um, take help from the philosophy that okay, what type of curriculum should be designed for this particular institute so when it comes to um, um, the curriculum development it is deeply influenced by the philosophical beliefs of the society or educational system so you cannot go against your society or your education and you make your educational system the rules according to the society because when you go against them definitely the people will speak about it and they you might not get students in that very institute and they think that okay, you are doing something wrong so whenever you are designing cur curriculum or content for any subject you have to be careful about especially these three terms it is idealists realists and progressive education then uh, in the third number for the scope of uh, philosophy in education it is teaching methods for example there are different approaches in teaching right so when you are uh, you know teaching what you need to do and how you uh, how to handle a classroom and what type of methods must be used while teaching the students so when we talk about the old method the first method here we have socratic method in this method he talked about that key students should be encouraged uh, and they should be taught through dialogue and they must be encouraged to question uh, questioning and uh, the questioning to stimulate critical thinking so according to this method students must be prepared for critical thinking they must be appreciated when they are asking question and they must be taught in the same way so they can learn to question and they can learn to be logical then we have montessori method when it comes to montessori method it's also known 
known as you know naturalist philosophy you can say that and it emphasizes learning through exploration and independence so this is independent way of learning students play together they do activities together so in that very way they learn then we have behavior a behaviorist approach then when it comes to behaviorist approach it is related to realism and positivism that focuses on you know uh, the structured learning repetition and reinforcement so the philosophy a te- the philosophy a teacher holds determines whether they promote creativity rote learning inquiry or experimental learning remember one thing you cannot you know fully go with socratic method you cannot fully go with montessori method or you cannot fully go with behaviorist approach but you have to mix all these according to the subject you have to work according to the class according to the mindset of the student you have to work so a single method cannot be applied every day for every subject so each subject has different way of teaching so that different way of teaching get uh, you know uh, supported by different ways of philosophy whether it is behaviorist whether it is pragmatic whether it is socratic or montessori whatsoever it all depends on the subject then when it comes to the role of the teacher so how philosophy shapes the teacher's personality when it comes to idealism the teacher is viewed as a moral and intellectual guide shaping the character and mind of the student so when it comes to idealist approach for it a teacher is always has a great moral and intellectual you know ability to shape the character of his or her students so when it comes to a pragmatic approach in pragmatism a teacher is just a facilitator a facilitator means teacher here just guide the students through the real world problem solving and experiences teacher is not fully involved here teacher is just there to guide them and students are doing the task by themselves and when it comes to existentialist education here the teacher helps students you know to explore their individual path and make personal choices and then when it comes to students role in learning so the philosophical perspective is they could that also influences students how you know how to be viewed in the learning process or, or how to learn so when we talk about constructivism that is you know a, a philosophy of knowledge you can say that emphasizes active participation of students in building their own understanding constructivism means students are you know coming up with their own understanding their own with their own perspectives their views are important here what the student is thinking that is important in constructivism when it comes to the traditional education mo- models students are seen as you know here they are the passive receivers of knowledge for example if we talk about the do old uh, classrooms where the teacher is giving lecture and all the students are sitting and the students are listening to the teacher without having any active participation in the class so the traditional education model that deals with passive that make students a passive receiver okay they are the students are passive receiver here when we talk about the progressive pet, uh, um, model so in progressive model students are actively involved they are the creators of the knowledge they are asking questions they are logically connected they are in debate so there that is the difference between traditional and progressive uh, models when it comes to existentialism if students follow this method so this encourages students to take responsibility for their own learning and choices so here the students are responsible whatever they do they are selecting their way of learning learning and they are the selectors of you know their choices so here the students are uh, involved and they have taken the step for themselves when it comes to educational policy and society so what is the role of philosophy in educational policy and society now see philosophy plays a crucial role in shaping educational policies and the relationship between education and society right if we talk about a democratic society uh, 
educational policies are often guided by philosophies that emphasize individuals freedom now when you are living in authoritarian societies where there is a dictatorship educational philosophy might focus on conformity obedience and nationalistic values so philosophy also addresses questions such as the role of education in promoting social justice equality and ethical behavior and then it comes uh that philosophy of educational evaluation when you are evaluating the result how philosophy helps see philosophy helps in determining how the success of education is evaluated should assessment focus on standardized testing and factual recall realist or behaviorist approach this is how you know uh, you test or you take exams or you decide whether you have achieved your goal or not should they access critical thinking creativity and personal growth again whether it is pragmatist or exist, uh, existentialist then evaluation practices depend on the philosophical outlook on the purpose of education again depend on the curriculum which you have designed so according to that designed curriculum you test your education system or you test your students then it comes to moral and ethical education again philosophy also deals with the moral and ethical dimensions of education how ethical education means that involves teaching students values ethics and how to live a good life which comes from the philosophies like idealism and humanism education also explores the ethical role of teachers and schools in society focusing on issues like justice fairness and respect so in summary remember one thing defining educational goals and objectives we are talking about the scope of uh, uh, philosophy in education okay so this is a summary of scope of education uh, scope of philosophy in education so it helps to define educational goals and objectives and it helps to uh, uh, it helps in shaping the curriculum and deciding what knowledge is valuable uh, influencing teaching methods and instructional uh, instructor uh, instructional uh, strategies then determining the role of the teacher and the student in the learning process guiding educational policies and the relationship between education and society directing how students are evaluated and what constitutes successful education and at the end it addresses moral and ethical education so this was all about education the definition of education and philosophy the comparison between educational and philosophy and then definitely the scope of philosophy in education thank you so much for today it is enough